Hi folks and welcome to the online ministry of First Assembly of God located at 407 Fort Street here in my hometown, Minden, Louisiana. Roll Tide Roll and Go Apaches. We're glad that you joined us this morning. This is our Monday devotion and it's first sent out at 9 a.m. in the morning. I hope you've uh, starting your day off with the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll be picking up in Acts chapter 12 verse 18. We'll be using the New Living Translation this morning. First, let's begin with prayer. Father, uh, I love you and praise you. Thank you for saving me and keeping me saved. God, for watching over us during the night, wakens us up this morning and getting us started with our day. May every part of this day bring glory to you, Lord Jesus. May we be the ministry team members that you've called us to be, being salt and light to the lost and iron that sharpens iron to the saved. Bless our, our spirit men with comprehension of your word today. And Lord, apply it, quicken it to us. And, uh, and Lord, apply this word to our lives that we might better serve you and not sin against you. Touch everyone, Lord, that hears this. And God, you, Lord, don't let me speak my voice, but you do the speaking. In Jesus' name we pray, for there's no name above it. Amen. Acts 12 and 18, New Living Translation. At dawn there was a great commotion among the soldiers about what had happened to Simon Peter. Herod Agrippa ordered a thorough search for him. When he couldn't be found, Herod interrogated the guards and sentenced them to death. How would you like that job? back then. I'm glad to do what I do. Afterward, Herod left Judea at, to stay in Caesarea for a while. We see that we're at the very uh, the aftermath of the Holy Ghost jailbreaking Simon Peter out of jail. Uh, no one could be found responsible, but the soldiers were held responsible. Understand that in our sins, relative to holy God, Jesus was okay. He desired to be held responsible for where we were irresponsible. In other words, he died for our sins so that we could live. So we thank God for that. Here we go with Herod and a very unusual, a very unusual story in the Bible. Acts chapter 12 verse 20 says this, now Herod was very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon. So they sent a delegation to make peace with him because their cities were dependent upon Herod's country for food. Well, that would make you kind of want to get along with folks, wouldn't it? The delegates won the support of Blastus, <laughs> what a name, Herod's personal assistant, and an appointment with Herod was granted. When the day arrived, Herod put on his royal robes, sat on his throne, and made a speech to them. Now, nothing's wrong with any of this so far, but you look at what happens next. Verse 22, the people gave him a great ovation, shouting, it's the voice of a God, not of a man. Folks, let me reiterate, as this story does, we should be careful when people praise us. I have people pat me on the back all the time for being a pastor and preaching and doing this and doing that and the other, and I am thankful for that. I am encouraged by that, but I dare not become prideful in that. Any good thing in me and the only good things in me <coughs> come through because of the Lord Jesus Christ and the sure mercies of God. So I understand that. I'm thankful that he gives me every sermon I speak. He gives me breath to speak words and I'm thankful for the encouragement. But at the same time, I do my best to always remember to say, and to God be the glory. They say it's the voice of a God and not of a man. Why are they doing that? They're trying to, uh, well, they're just trying to snuggle up to King Herod and to get to the point to where he's not mad at them anymore. So they're piling on the praise, if you will. Now then, verse 23 says this, Instantly, an angel of the Lord struck Herod with a sickness because he accepted the people's worship instead of giving the glory 
to God. That is the truth of all truths, folks. People should pat us on the back. We should be encouragers one of another. And yet at the same time, we any good thing that comes out of us came from the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at what it says happened to him. So he was consumed with worms and died. That is the strangest thing you ever heard in your life, or at least it is to me. Consumed with worms and died. All sorts of commentaries have been written to try to explain this, but this is the true words and verbiage from the Bible. He was, con he was smitten by an angel of the Lord with a sickness because he accepted the people's worship instead of giving glory to God. So he was consumed with worms and died. Boy, what a punishment for he was unsaved to start with. And boy, he had it bad in his death. Folks, let us re remind ourselves that any good thing that we do, we need to, we can use it as a testimony, as a witness a Christian brother and sister, that to God be the glory. Anytime somebody pats us on the back, receive it, be thankful for it, and tell them, yes, and God's the one that caused me to do that. God's the one that, that reminded me to do that. God's the one that showed me how to do that. Because Jesus went about doing good. His disciples, which we are, and I'm referring to the 12, but now also to us, we all go about doing good or should simply because it is the Lord's way. And if we would be like him, if we would be Christian followers of Christ, if you will, which is what Christian means, then we should be like him. Matthew chapter 5 was telling us uh, yesterday in our sermon, as, as the Lord brought out a sermon uh, through the latter part of that chapter, was showing us how we ought to act, things we should do, things we shouldn't do. And the amazing thing is we fall short of the glory of God. But what we must always do is say, you know what? I, I fall short of his expectations in so many areas, but I want to give glory to God right now that he is the reason I'm nice because I used to wasn't nice. I used to didn't love people. I used to didn't reach out to people. I used to didn't care. And folks, if you're born again, if you're truly washed in the blood and have a whole new inner you from the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost, that is how you will be. You will do good things. Last scripture here, if we will, or next to last. Here it says, meanwhile, after this, the word of God continued to spread and there were many new believers. I want to ask you, Christian, are you spreading the word of God? Are you spreading the ways of God? Do people look at you and know that you are Christian <clears throat> by how you act and how you speak and the things you don't speak and the things that you don't do? Our Christian witness is more than just what we say. It's more than what we dress, how we dress. It's more than where we go. And yet it is all these things together and combined. So that is where we need to be. We need to be that witness on foot because Christ is in heaven. The head of the church is in heaven. We are his hands. We are his mouth. We are his feet. Everywhere we go this week, let us be sure and certain that when we've left the area, that they will say, you know what? That person was a Christian. You could just tell it. They didn't have to say it. You could, you could tell by how they acted, how they did, and how they treated me. So folks, let us treat people with kindness and love, even strangers, even enemies, as Christ did. God bless you. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.